Welcome to Six Figs, I'm Kyle, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about blockchain and AI and what exactly AI needs to actually be successful to run on chain, folks. We're gonna be talking about Definity's internet computer and near protocol. Now, these are two very well-respected blockchains and they are juggernauts of their time. I do think that both of these chains will experience success within the AI industry. Fabio on X at Zero to Hero Zombie basically dropped a really nice chart of a bunch of different metrics that really show the power of both of these blockchains. For example, ICP is currently running at around 3,200 transactions per second. It's more like about 4,000, 5,000, somewhere in there. It just depends on the day. Near, it says it's running at about 40 transactions per second. It's actually closer to 75. How do I know this? Because I checked this before this video. Now, the finality rate between these two chains is actually pretty good, with the internet computer leading at just under a second for finality rate. That means how long does it take to process a block, a transaction, etc. Near, on the other hand, is at 3.3 seconds, which still is very good, unlike Ethereum, unlike Solana, unlike Cardano, and who knows about Avalanche. But it just is what it is. ICP and NIR are pretty dang fast blockchains. Is this going to be needed in AI? Yes. Are we going to need to have somewhat fast transactions when it comes to AI? Yes. That's where I worry about NIR a little bit, and I don't know what its utmost TPS is. But when it comes down to it, the average cost NIR has Definity and pretty much all the other chains cornered on this list. It's very inexpensive. Don't get me wrong, Definity's ICP is very cheap as well. 0 0.0012, uh, pen, you know, it's, it's a fraction of a penny. And here is a fraction of a fraction of a penny. So when it comes down to the size of like the network nodes, NIR has about 207, 208 at the time of this video, and also ICP has about 600, 640, I think it was. But at the end of the day, we will see the size of the network nodes increase. These are both relatively new chains that are bringing the bacon to the table at a high level. Now, I will say this, that ICP has got some of the best storage costs per year. When it comes down to a gigabyte, it costs $5.35 to store a gigabyte of data on the internet computer. When I think about this, folks, from an AI standpoint, there is going to be a huge need for data storage, at least data that cannot be tampered with. So if you have an AI model that is pulling from some Web2 cloud service like Google Cloud or Amazon Web Services, something gets censored or what have you, now all of a sudden you have this poisoned AI model. And that just doesn't look good, it doesn't work good, and it's gonna cause a whole bunch of problems. So when it comes down to it, at the end of the day, $1,500 for a gigabyte of data, it's really not that bad when compared to Solana, Ethereum, and a bunch of other chains for that matter. So, I mean, there's other ways that Near could thrive, like maybe they could connect to Internet Computer and use the Internet Computer's data storage capabilities through some sort of uh, chain key bridge or something like that. Um, when it comes down to it, both of these projects, folks, are sitting very comfortably at the top of the top of the AI and big data tokens by market cap. 
Now, I don't want you guys to get confused here about what we're seeing, but really when it comes down to it, this is just market cap. This has nothing to do with technical capabilities. So there could be one of these lower ranked chains out there that are saying, hey, we've got better technology than you know some of these chains up here. And it might be the case. But when we measure this by market cap, Near has a dominant position at rank number 19 in the cryptoverse. Internet computer is nipping at the heels a few billion dollars behind in market cap. I do believe that internet computer has a better position to host large AI scale platforms because of the uh, abilities and advancements it has here. Now, when it comes down to um, <clears throat> performance and, and things like that, there are um, things that will benefit internet computer. Uh, for example, HTTPS outcalls, which basically allow internet computer to talk to web two without oracles, without any bridges, without any APIs, anything like that. So internet computer has HTTPS outcalls built in natively to its software. So uh, when it comes down to that, that is one less source that you need to trust. Um, you know, if you've got some sort of Oracle, and I'm a big fan of Oracles, Chainlink is one of the Oracles out there that I think is probably going to do pretty well because all these blockchains out here, I guarantee it, there's probably not one of these blockchains in this list that has HTTPS outcalls natively built into it. So what are they going to do? They're going to rely on oracles and bridges and all sorts of other things. Now you can also, uh, let's say that there is some web two data provider. Sometimes they can run their own node on the blockchain to facilitate web two information through that node. So it's just kind of, um, you know, it, it's, it's like uh, alchemy. I think they do that. Uh, so it just, it is what it is, folks. Let's take a quick look at the crypto markets and we're going to really focus on Bitcoin near and Definity. You can see the whole market is just kind of taking a downturn the last few days. Uh, but when we look at Bitcoin here, what is Bitcoin doing? I want to look at the RSI and I'm a big patterns guy. And really when it comes down to it, you can see that Bitcoin is squeezing into this very nice falling wedge. This is a very bullish pattern to be seen. And the fact that we're seeing this on the weekly chart gets me all sorts of excited. So at the end of the day, folks, I do think that right now, we are gearing up to really see something good happen. I do feel like we are going to see a little bit of a break here in the action. We are seeing Bitcoin really run up here in an Elliott Wave Theory fashion. Elliott Wave Theory is basically <clears throat> a law of impulse waves in a law of corrective waves. And they move in segments, 0 to 1, 2 to 3, four to five. And then you'll also see an ABCDE or an ABC correction. And when we look at the bear market in 2021, we can see that there was in fact an ABCDE correction that took place. Now I do think that we are kind of gearing up to really start popping off here and to see that price action is holding over this 50 moving average. Another reason, folks, to come up here and subscribe, another reason to follow me on X, is that since March, April of 2024, I've been telling everybody that we need to trade sideways on the weekly to bump into this 50 moving average. And then we might see something like this happen. Price moves to the 50 moving average. If we get support, it's up. It's up. So I do think that Bitcoin is gearing up to move. And right now we do have 
uh, Elliott Wave Theory Impulse, which is valid at this time on Bitcoin. And really, when it comes down to it, we measure span 0 to 1, and we measure span 2 to 3. If 2 to 3 is less in length and height than span 0 to 1, guess what? We know that this thing has a possibility to rip off from 4 to 5. Where are we going to go from here, though? That is the million-dollar question, isn't it? So I do think that Bitcoin is, in fact, going to have a nice little journey up to about this $89,000 level, maybe even to $109,000, somewhere in that neck of the woods. We'll just have to cross those roads when we get there. So I hope you guys enjoyed the TA on Bitcoin here, and we are going to pull up the near charts right now. And really, when it comes down to it, I do think that near is in a very solid position to maybe start rampaging to the upside. And we're seeing near kind of conduct the same style move that Bitcoin is doing. And when it comes down to it, we have near really pressing and holding nicely on this 50 moving average. And I do think that even though there may not be Elliott wave theory that is prevalent here, uh, you can definitely see that there was a very textbook corrective wave uh, that did happen. So I do think that right now, near could be experiencing a few different things. And it's surprising how much these charts look alike, ICP and near. If we take this trend line and just post it at the most recent local high resistance, you can see how we have a very nice, a very nice cup that has formed on the near charts. And I do think that we've got a damn good handle that has formed as a result. So when we look at technical analysis, especially cup and handles, what I like to do is draw a trend line from the bottom of the cup up to the brim of the cup. And really when it comes down to it, I like to see some variances here. So we can put this at the most recent all-time low, which was at $3.11. And we could see near possibly run up to $27.42 on the low end of things. And on the high end of things, folks, I do think that it could be possible to see near up to around $78. Now let's just see uh, what happens here when we throw up a, a Fibonacci extension. Uh, looks like the 161.8 is right around that $13. Let's just go from all time highs back in 2021. Uh, you can kind of see how, you know, the 161.8, $32. We can see that 786 is still at $16, which is right about those previous all-time highs. So I would like to see near really kind of create an Elliott Wave Theory movement, something like this to get up to some of these higher numbers, uh, 50, 60, $70 ish range. When it comes to ICP, ICP folks has been really kind of slugging along here. Um, it really has somewhat of a similar cup and handle style feature to its price structure that we just kind of outlined with near. And you can see there is a nice handle that is formed. However, ICP has fallen through this 50 moving average. Um, so there is one thing that I do love going forward is this thin Ichimoku cloud. And I do think that we will see ICP have a great chance to possibly break through that. Um, when it comes down to it, ICP could very well be in its early stages of Elliott wave theory. And by default, if we take, uh, let's just say this is span zero to two, uh, we're just gonna draw three and four and five up here. By default, if this is Elliott Wave Theory playing out, uh, we will need ICP to reach a minimum of about $44. And I do think we're going to see ICP rip a lot higher. But when it comes down to it, 
I do feel like this position will probably be more up here. Um, and then we will see position five somewhere up here. I do think that ICP has this ability and this chance to maybe run up to around the $100 to $180 uh, mark this next bull run, uh, something somewhere in there. And when we go back and we look at the, you know, one of the more verifiable resistance points in previous price action history, uh, you can see how price action came up to this uh, 236, basically got rejected. You know, it, like I said, it wouldn't surprise me to see price action kind of do one of these things up to the 161.8, uh, at least up to around $142. And when it comes down to it, I love to look at things in a market cap sense. So when we have uh, internet computer, let's just look at this thing on CoinGecko. We'll do the same for Near. Its market cap is at uh, a, a very cool $3.6 billion. So if we're talking $142 divided by $7.82, that would be an 18X from here. Uh, times 3.65675, which would bring us up to about a $66 billion market cap. Now, I do think that is very reasonable on the low end for ICP to hit. And when we look at near, we're just sitting at under a $5 billion market cap. And I mentioned the number $75, somewhere in there. Divide that by $4.46, that leaves us with a 16X. And really when it comes down to it, we'd be looking at about an $82 billion market cap for near. So I do think that right now, the markets, despite the bloodiness the last few days, are looking good. And when it comes down to the AI technology sector, I do believe that internet computer is best positioned for AI infrastructure applications, like things with infrastructure. I do think that NIR will also do tremendous on AI when it comes down to tooling and things like that.